What's going on? It's David Palmer and I'm with Adam Tim today from Zen Life and you know what? Adam and I both live in Los Angeles. We do. And we both thought it would be a great idea to do a video about conscious men dating in the new age and how it's a great thing and it's it also thing. could be crazy. Wouldn't you say so? I would say that it can, uh, yeah, it can be chaotic. It can drain one's energy if we're not careful. Um, well, but, especially because you do Zen life, which is all about finding that inner Zen, that peace again. Absolutely. And I'm all about astrology, finding your whole, you know, soul. It also does well with love. Yeah. And living in LA, you'd think that you and I would have mastered maybe this, but you know, yeah. it's such a, dating in this new world is so weird. It's very different. It's a new way to date. What do you, I mean, how's, how's it been for you? Uh, well, I would say that there is... There's lots to choose from, <laughs> yeah. and uh, it's really about trying to find a, a match. Yeah. Right? So we're looking for love. We're looking for the, the one person, like to quote Aladdin, the diamond in the rough. Oh yeah. And I think the tendency is to spread ourselves too thin, dating many different women, um, in the hopes that one of them is the one. But. Um, well, what have you found to be, because the reason this conversation came, I think it's interesting to talk about like why this conversation came up. I think both of us are coming out of a time where after dating so many people and still not finding anything, like at some point you just want to give up. Yeah, I would say uh, three years single in Hollywood has been a very interesting thing, uh, especially with technology and Tinder and dating apps. I've been on every dating app. I've done Tinder. Plus, I'm a YouTube personality and a TV personality. So yeah. trust me, I've, I've had everything come at me that, yeah. and yeah, it's almost too much. I feel very stretched out. Right. I feel like uh, it's just so different. You know, back in the day when you met a girl on AOL, it was like the one girl with the one profile, right. and it was like the one thing that you focused on, and yeah. then it was the big meet. Now it's kind of like, met you, Somebody else wants to meet tomorrow, so, well, let's just see if that one's work or, and now you become so stretched. Right, right. And uh, I think that you said that even this, in the last couple of months, that you returning to yourself has been about not dating anyone. And I found the same, the same thing. Uh, I've been dating in Hollywood for four years. <laughs> and, you got a year on me. Right? And uh, I'm, I'm starting to so clearly see that I really enjoy my alone time. So how do you balance really enjoying your alone time with wanting to find a partner? And then it begs the question, what are we, why are we looking to partner anyway? What, is, what does that mean? So the ultimate goal is to be in a partnership where you're with someone who is equal and excited to be with. And I'm asking why? Like, what's the big why behind that? Like for you, what is it? Well, I don't even know if I have a big why anymore. I'm just ah. kind of like at a place where maybe this new way of doing things and this new dating consciousness is a new dating consciousness. Uh -huh. It's not being defined yet. Maybe there, there isn't a destination point. Right. That's what I've been kind of thinking of lately. Well, yeah. maybe there isn't. I mean, we all like to have that like love aspect, but you know, I found it more myself, I think, from the experience right. of not finding it maybe through so, so many dates. I don't yeah. know. Uh, I think you said something key right then, right there, is that if we don't have a core, a deep core of self-love, then if we're constantly looking for that in another person, we can never find it. Because yeah. really we're looking for that reflection in someone else. Like, show me that you love me, but I don't know what that means to me. So we're like grasping and grasping and grasping. And it, it is grasping something that to me now is, you know what, loving myself and, and, and loving what I am as a person now has been so much more satisfying than, and, than anything I've ever found in my oh, life. Yeah. And, you know, maybe, I don't know, I just don't want to say I'm going to love myself forever right. and that's it. Right. But gosh, that's been a huge part of my life right now. Yeah. And dating with that requires somebody that's loving themselves that much. Right. 
Right. And that's a lot. Yeah. You know? So when we begin with ourselves, it sounds like, and I, I'm finding the same thing, when we begin with self-love, when we begin with rooting ourselves, my meditation practice is a big part of this. Yeah. Like if we can be content and actually overjoy just sitting still, which is really med what meditation is, for 20 or 30 minutes each day, what does that say for being with someone? We really have to enjoy our time yeah. if just sitting still with ourselves is joyful. That's true. You know? Um, and so I think that there's this idea that we have to constantly be looking for a partner. We're constantly looking for the one. There's the culture of love and romance. And Valentine's Day. And Valentine's that's Day coming is up. Coming. Yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and maybe it's not, maybe that's not the ticket. Dana, my business partner, uh, she's a master dater. She's been married and divorced. She got out of a 13 year relationship with her husband, has wow. two kids, went into the poly life, the open relationship world, and she experimented and found that many people don't know how to date. Right, that's true. And with the new technology, it's almost like you can just go meet somebody really quick. It's yeah. like you're not showing up with flowers anymore. You're not, you know, men are meant to court. Yeah. And there's that, when you're courting, you know, a bunch at a time, yeah. that becomes, your courting skill, yeah. I think, is there. I don't want to say I'm not great at courting, but it's when you're using it that much, I don't know if we've ever been here before. Right. We've never been here before as a no, man. The no. new conscious man in 2015 is courting differently. It's accessing relationships differently. Yeah. It's, it's a new game, and it's weird. Yeah. And I don't think we, you and I even have the answers. I just think we're trying to have a conscious conversation yeah. about it because... Yeah. Even though you and I will talk many times over the years of like, oh, how's your relationship life? Like girls do, guys do the same thing. Sure, sure. And it's so funny that you and I kind of uh, have been, you know, ans trying to answer these questions through our friendship or right. through looking at our own lives. And it's a, it's a weird one. Yeah. But I think your conscious life has to come first. Right. And I think that's what the time has been as well, yeah. is people putting their conscious life first and then kind of seeing how the relationships fit in second. Right. Which that's, I think, the kicker. That's, yeah. that is, and especially with the increase in prevalence of uh, online dating and just a, more to choose from, if we don't start with ourselves, if we're not aligned and grounded in who we are, it's very easy to lose ourselves. Like, I've lost myself in dating, constantly wow. looking to the next date, constantly looking to the next dating experience or the next girl, and not even knowing what I'm looking for, right. just that it's the next thing. Right, right. Right? I know, and that, but that is such a great feeling though too, you know, you just like, oh my God, if you want that most beautiful next thing to be so great, because that one didn't work out. Right. Sometimes it might be a drug or it might be a rush. It's a dopamine rush. It is. I, sure. I think that we all, I mean, it doesn't matter if you're a guy, a girl, or anything. You're, an, you're a complete liar if you're saying that you're not excited to hopefully find somebody new when something doesn't work out. Oh. You are a liar. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because we all have that want that comes next and that thrill is, wow. Yeah. But then there's a, a letdown sometimes. Yeah. You know, it's the build like, up and oh let my down. gosh, no, this didn't work out. Oh, the build man. up and the letdown. Build and you got to have down. whatever you're doing in your conscious self, your love for yourself to kind of keep you going through it. Well, I think that we balance it out as we become more rooted in who we are. Instead of craving the build up and let down, these polar opposites, we see that it's better, we're better spent in this balanced state of equilibrium. Yeah. And when we invite a partner into this balanced state, as opposed to the questing and the letdown, it's easier to understand who's right for us because we're seeing, oh, there's, there's a matchup, there's a frequency, yeah. it's energetic, there's an alignment here, as opposed to, are you reaching for what I'm reaching for? Yeah. And then the come down, it's like, oh, yeah, looks that, like we weren't. I know, and that can be rough. Yeah. I know, and you know, coming into this Valentine's Day and just coming into this year, I don't know if there is a way to be except you're in yourself and that right. relationships come and go and hopefully you find one that really sinks beautifully. Yeah. But in this age and in this way, you've got to put yourself first. And I think, you know, my last relationships in my life have been great, but leaving those have made me the best of myself. And those partners always teach you 
how to be so great, you yeah. know? And you gotta love them forever yeah. because of that. Yeah. But, you know, I think that this is a new, a new dating paradigm and we're all just scratching the surface. Right. And it's really about radical self-love. Like, can we love ourselves yeah. unconditionally so that we're not giving away pieces of ourselves to whatever partner we happen to be dating right. now? Or hoping that, that uh, Jerry Maguire, you complete me. Right. That's all romantic and nice, but really, if you're looking for someone to complete you, the, imp yeah, the, the you implication is that you're not whole, that I'm not whole, that I need someone else. That movie was a perfect example of how he went broke, so he's like, I guess I'm just gonna marry this girl because yeah. she like has her own place through her family yeah. or her sister or whatever. And that way of like, like kind of using people yeah. for, oh well, benefit, she's got money or he's got money or, and even outside of money, maybe it's other things, that's when you, you'll get to a place where that won't work anymore. Right. It's almost like true equilibrium or true equality of man and woman has to truly come now. Yeah. You got your life, I got my life, and I always say we got your car and my car and we're following each other into the sunset. Right. Yeah. Instead of jump in my car and I'll take you to the sunset. Yeah. That's not working anymore. Exactly. We have to be whole and complete and then we have something, the third entity, which is a whole and complete other thing. Yeah. That is the partnership. And I think that that's a different paradigm. And it goes outside of the romantic ideals right. that we've, I think, learned through popular culture. Right. And too many movies. I know. And too many, too many stories. Many, yeah. Although the notebook is something I do love for all the ladies out there. I do feel very notebooky. And you know what? To end this in a beautiful way, I think the notebook is the best way of describing not the love to remember, but in how a story you have to remind yourself and read it to yourself to maybe awaken to who you are because she had dementia at the end and he had to read her the story. That's what astrology and consciousness is, is going within to remember your story again in a quiet place to remember who you are. And if you don't have that total remembrance of who you are, you won't connect, no. right? Because you, you really aren't who you are because she really, is his wife, but she doesn't know she's his wife because she's so unconscious of what's going on. Right. And in many ways, unconsciousness in a relationship turns out to be where you could have a love of 35 years and it be nothing because that unconsciousness isn't there. Right. Good way to end it. <laughs> but yeah. You gotta be conscious. So, so bonus material. Yes. Yeah. How, how, does, how does a woman succeed in having a relationship with either one of you? Be yourself. Know who you are. So it's the same, we have to know who we are, a woman has to know who they are, so they're not seeking something from someone else that, that can never be fulfilled. I have a history of attracting women who have a, a hole, a black hole that can never be filled, no matter how much love and affection they're showered upon. Um, and that comes from not knowing oneself yeah. and coming from this kind of dysfunctional state of uh, whatever it is. So. We have to do the work on ourselves. It's work to know yourself. It's, it's it work, is work to be conscious. It's a lot of work. And that's why I don't think any woman or man coming in any relationship has to do anything. It's what you do in yourself. Right. There's no, they don't do nothing. Yeah. And, and actually, if we look at this in a crazy way, we're all just projecting the people in our lives. Yeah. Because the same way the sun projects this reality here, we're just the projector piece on the wall. Those relationships are the projector piece on the wall. They're not doing anything. Right. We're projecting them into our lives. Yeah. So, kind of an interesting way to look at it. Next question, women always say, how do, you, how do I get a man to commit? I don't think there's any such thing as true commitment through how to make somebody commit. There's no book to buy, there's no, there's no thing to do. There's no amount of flowers that you can do. Commitment is, uh, is, a, is an emotional thing that's deep inside and emotions do change. And I think that the universe has its own laws and its own ways and there's, there's its own story and no human being in their right has the ability to allow that story to change of what you've already signed up for, what they've already signed up for and you gotta go with that. And the more you're looking for that kind of egotistical, I need you in my life to commit, you're on the wrong page.
I would say that um, it's a confluence of different things. It's chemistry, it's, uh, it's intellect, it's what I'm looking for, it's what she's looking for. So, I don't know, it's a feeling. So once you feel it, you kind of know. It's like one of those things, like I don't know what I'm looking for, but I'll right. know it when I see it. That seems well, like a nebulous response, but true. that's what it is. That's really what it is. It is. Well, thanks, Adam. You know, yeah. Zen life is so awesome. And thanks, I love brother. that you can just be my friend and we can always come together and have totally. a conscious conversation about everything in the world. Yeah, me too. And you're awesome, man. Thanks, brother. You too. Yeah.